This is Walt with Multiversity Comics here with Team Luther Strode. We've got Justin Jordan and Trad Moore. How, how's your con been, guys? Yeah, very good. We've been having a good time. It's been busy. Agreed. Yes, it has. It's been very cool. All right, so we've got uh, the comic that they've been doing is Strange Talent of Luther Strode. If you haven't heard about it, it's kind of a twisted take on the whole Charles Atlas ads. Basically, instead of becoming, you know, hero of the beach, he becomes more Mr. Hyde, in a sense. So how long have the two of you been working on the book together? Uh, two years. One. A little over two years now, yeah. We uh, hooked up in 2009. That makes us sound like we're not working as hard as we are. We put the pitch together two years ago, got picked up a year ago. So actually, in terms of the book, we've been working for about a year on it, so. All right, and how long has the, for more for Justin, how long has the book been sort of an idea? How long have you been oh, Not surprisingly, not as long as you might think. I actually only got it into like a real final form just a week or two before I pitched it to Trad. Um, it was kind of, I had had the ideas that formed it, but the actual story itself just kind of went, the idea is two or three years, but yeah, I got the idea and it, the name of the title came to me and then I pitched it to him and two short years later, here we are. All right, and how did the two of you get in contact in the first place? DeviantArt and email. He found me on DeviantArt and then, yeah, just sent me an email and uh, I was pretty easy to woo, I guess. I just kind of, I was, I was going into my senior year at Savannah College of Art and Design and it was the summer in between and uh, I was just excited to be pitched to and to get to work on something. So, yeah, I just jumped right on that summer. And artistically, um, did you have to shift your style in a particular way or were you just kind of going in a direction that you normally went in? Did it just fit? It was one of those things that it just fit, and I think that was, you know, he was looking for a guy who would fit with the idea because, yeah, that kind of, I really didn't have to change anything. The, I just kind of do the tongue-in-cheeky, violent, but still, still fun type stuff. That's just the stuff that I've always done, so he uh, made a good choice, I think. I agree. Yeah. And uh, speaking of violence, one of the things that you see happening a lot in comics is violence for the sake of violence. And rather than, you know, just putting it in a way that, you know, it's supposed to have a meaning behind it, a lot of times you, like, see some ultra gory scene and you just roll your eyes and say, okay, here's this again, which absolutely does not happen in your book. And what do you think, what do you do differently? really hard on the characters and you know I think it's a character based book in spite of all the violence and part of the point of it is the violence is meant to be horrifying like it's not meant to be titillating like it's a little tongue-in-cheek because it's that kind of book but like fundamentally at the end of the day he's destroying human bodies and like the art and the writing is designed to make you actually feel what that would be like because he's a regular guy so if to get him from regular guy to body smashing Titan is kind of the story that you're you know the books about Agreed. Yeah, no, I think I think the characters are the main difference because like I think when you look at horror movies that work and ones that don't, if you don't care about the main characters, you're not gonna care about the movie. And I think having strong characters makes it so that you care about what happens and it makes the violence not seem, you know, TNA just like of blood and gore, you know, so I think that's what changes it. If you look at the original Halloween, the Carpenter version, uh, it's actually not that violent, but beyond that, there's Laurie Strode, who's the inspiration behind the Luther Strode name, is actually a really strong character, and her friends are actually likable people, and they kind of feel real. And when uh, Michael Myers starts, you know, wrecking them, basically, like, you actually kind of feel for it. And that's true to a certain extent in the original Friday the 13th, but a lot of horror movies have lost that. A lot of them are just sort of like, you know, nubile placeholders that are there, look sexy, get naked, and die. But that's not our kind of book. All right. And uh, speaking of horror, if you had to, you know, sometimes it's a pain to try and, like, pigeonhole and just pick one thing. What would you, would you call Luther Strode primarily a horror book? Is it, where does it fall on the radar of genre, if you had to genre it? That's a really tricky question. I wouldn't put it in, in distinctly horror, um, but I think fans of horror would like it. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things. Uh, I agree. I would say it's a superhero book that's really influenced by yeah, horror. Agreed. Like, a lot of the roots of it are there, but I wouldn't strictly classify it as a horror book. 
All right, so the first issue has been out for, is it one week or two weeks at this point? Uh, a week and eight days. All right. Or eight days, not a week and eight days. How, is, how have you guys been feeling about the success it seems to be having? Just uh, how does it feel to just have this comic out on the stands? I know, I re remember you mentioning it was your, it's your first published one. Um, is it yours as well? No, it's my first large published comic, but I have small press work just floating around out there. But yeah, it's been it's been crazy. Like I, it's just uh, it's one of those things where I, I'm so interested in seeing what everyone else uh, is saying about it, and so excited about getting feedback that I actually have to kind of like warrant the amount of time that I spend on the internet. You know what I mean? Because I do want to respond to as many people as I can, and, and I actually I I had avoided Twitter for a very long time. But just seeing that that's a quick way to respond to people and stuff, I, I got one last week just because I was like. I love getting this feedback and I love being able to talk to people about it and just you know just hearing little even if they're just like cool book and I can say thanks then that's that's awesome yeah it's been it's exciting uh, it's really gratifying I mean it's nerve-wracking yes. uh, you're waiting for your book to come out you know that Wednesday's there and, and for like a week or two beforehand I was fine nonchalant but like about Sunday I started to be like oh, I really hope people like this freaking book and then Wednesday comes and we got a lot of really good reviews and people really seem to enjoy the book like it's really good that it's selling well but more than that people really seem to get it like when I read reviews and stuff like yeah that's what I was going for you know it's one of those things where I've kind of made that connection so that's it's really good it's when you're a writer that's what you want and uh, you mentioned Twitter, and this is just a question I'm interested in asking pretty much any creator that we talk to is, how do you think this uh, age of social media is affecting the comic industry, how, th how they're made, you've met through DeviantArt, you know? Uh, I mean, I think, yeah, no, I, I think it's awesome, you know, because it is so much easier to get in contact with people, you know what I mean? And whether or not someone responds to you, that's not something you need to, like, worry about, because I sent out, I was sending out portfolio after portfolio right after I graduated and and the fact that I can do that and you know I got maybe one out of six people would respond to me but the fact that I can contact anybody right off the bat if you don't have an inter -pres internet presence nowadays you just you're not doing it right you know what I mean so I think it's cool yeah I agree um, it's interesting if it weren't for the internet I wouldn't have a comics career so uh, you know I'm for it uh, it was interesting when I was growing up I'm old enough to be pre-internet and like comics as a whole was kind of like a closed industry like I didn't you know know what anybody looked like or what they did and yep. there are no cons anywhere near me so uh, and you know I come from a county that has 40,000 people in it so the odds of me being able to Kirkman it up and find a pro quality artist in my own area are slim so the internet is the thing the idea that you're from Pennsylvania yeah I'm from Georgia and Felipe the colorist is from Brazil yeah I mean, that just wouldn't have been able to happen yeah, that's any other only way. Only the internet can do yep. that. Yeah. All right, and so the current uh, miniseries goes up to six issues. Is it a completely self-contained thing, or is there a possibility for m more Luther Strode in the future? Both. Uh, it is completely self-contained. Like, the story, you get a complete story when you read Luther Strode. There are elements in it that I would like to pick up in a sequel miniseries, yes, and we would like to do it. And uh, one final kind of silly question. To kind of characterize the difference between Luther Strode before and after his little change of wardrobe and everything else, including the body, um, what would you say was the top listened to track on his iPod or media player of choice before and after? I have absolutely no idea. I, I am such a Neanderthal, I don't have an iPod, I don't listen to a lot of music, and so I don't think about that. If you ask me what his favorite comic books were, I could probably name it, but uh, Trad's all youthy yeah. and musical. I will say, maybe not what he was listening to, but beforehand, he was, uh, we can say that he's a little depressed kid, we can say he was listening to Postal Service, and then after, as he's killing, he's listening to a lot of Meshuga. So just like, just, if you listen to that while flipping, I'll listen to that while drawing and it's just ready to kill. So that's what he's listening to. Well, thank you guys very much for taking the time to talk to us. We really appreciate you taking the time to interview us. All right. Thank you.